Okay. So, right to left languages, is there even such a thing? I'll answer that in a question in a second. But uh, before that, I'll just want you to note that this presentation is going to be rendered both in Hebrew and in English, so you can visualize a little bit some of the differences. Um, let's start with the basics. What is a language? So a language is a form of human communication comprising of words in a structured way. No directionality in that. Um, but a language is often, not always, rendered in writing. Uh, and then when you write it, you do that using a writing uh, a script. A script is the combination of symbols. Symbols can be letters, like an alphabet, but not necessarily. And the rules on how to use those symbols to form words in a structured way, so the language. The directionality actually applies to the script, not to the language. And some languages can actually be written in more than one script. For example, Azeri. In Azerbaijan, it is written using a left-to-right Latin script. Head over to Russia, it is written using the Cyrillic script, also left-to-right. But then if you head over to Iran, where there are millions of Azeris, they write their Azeri <laughs> with a right-to-left Perso-Arabic script. So the same language, but three different ways to write it. So what are the most common languages that use primarily a right-to-left script? We, of course, got Arabic. It's the biggest one. But we also have Punjabi, Urdu, Farsi, or Persian, used in Iran, Pashto, and then languages like Maldivian, Sorani, or Uyghur, which is actually used in parts of China. There are, of course, many more smaller languages. Now, you might be looking at those languages, at the way their native names are written, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, they kind of look similar to me. Uh, but that's okay, that's because the script has some similarities, but the language themselves can be actually very different one from another. For example, let's look at Arabic and Farsi. If you'd imagine the languages of the world as leaves growing on a tree, you'll have a branch for Germanic languages, like English and German. Not far away, you'll have a branch for Romanic or Latin languages, so you have French there and Spanish. And, well, quite a bit on the other side of the tree, you'll have Arabic. Uh, Farsi, uh, sorry, you'll have, uh, you'll have Farsi or Persian. Arabic wouldn't even be on the same tree. So that's how different the languages are, even if they share some similarities in the script. Now, the languages that are primarily written from right to left are spread all over from North Africa, the Mediterranean, the Middle East, and various parts of Asia. We're talking about something like 600 million native speakers. That's about 1 in 12 person in the world. So there you have your reason for adding right-to-left support. Even if your motivation might be for your businesses to increase your reach, or just because you want to be more inclusive, there's no contradiction there. You want to do that. Now, before we actually talk about how to do this, I'd like to talk about some important concept of directionality. What's important to know is, it's, is that it don't just affect the text. It actually affect everything that you look at. Uh, and to demonstrate that, I'm going to use a book, not just any book. This is Asterix le Gaulois, the first tome of a very popular comic book series uh, coming from France. And if I uh, open that book, like all civilized people, I know that I'm supposed to be opening it from left to right. And when I get to that first page of the story, what uh, you can see is I have, well, they call it panels in comic book, so drawings. And I've got text and speech bubbles. And like, well, all civilized, people uh, pe all civilized people know, I'm supposed to be reading this from left to right. Well, I happen to have here is the same exact book, but translated to Hebrew. So, Asterix Hagali, okay? That's how we call him. And then when I open this book, I just know that I'm supposed to be opening it from right to left. And when I get to that first page of the story, sorry, uh, then I see those same panels, but in a different kind of order. But it is natural to me, a Hebrew speaker, that I should be reading them from right to left. Now, if I, I put those two pages on the screen, so you can see you have the French on the left and the Hebrew on the right, you can see that it's not just the direction of the text, and it's not just the order of the different panels, it's also the image themselves that have been mostly mirrored. And the reason for that is because an image often has some sense of movement, direction, position in it. 
and an image has an interaction with its surrounding, be it the overall story, the text, or the image next to it. And if we wouldn't mirror the image, we'd end up with something that is, might be contradiction. Now, you want to mirror most of your images, but not all of them. As you can see here, we have a map of France. And the mirrored map of France is, of course, no longer a mirrored map, uh, map of France. So you don't want to do that. Now, you might be thinking to yourself at this stage, OK, this is a comic book. It's kind of obvious. But how does it really affect us? Um, and um, the truth is, it really affects much more than just things that are uh, objects like books. Uh, research has actually shown that the visual perception of spatial relationship between objects is different between people who primarily read from left to right or from right to left. And I'll translate that. It just means that our brains are wired a little bit differently. The way we perceive the world is slightly different. And this has actually been observed with children as young as four years old, which means that before they learn how to read, the culture that they grow in affects the way they visualize things. And for us, if we talked about the web or mobile apps, this is about where you place the back button or where you put your logo on the page. All of those things matter. And if you've got some best practices on how to do this in a left to right language, then most likely the best practice on how to do this in a right to left language is just to mirror that same behavior. So now we're at the point where we can actually talk about how to do this in WordPress. And we used to have different methods to do this in the themes and plugins. For themes, we were told to be using RTL CSS which was great. It's actually the reason I got involved with WordPress. Back in 2006, WordPress got amazing right-to-left support uh, by a team of Farsi contributors and uh, lead, contributor, uh, lead developer Ryan Boren at the time. And that was amazing. It was really, it brought us along. But now, RTL CSS is a method that doesn't really fit a modern workflow with themes. It doesn't really fit a theme that has more than one CSS file. It, it's another request, and it's kind of hard to generate that file automatically. Uh, so what I'd like for all of us to come uh, to learn from this is not just not to use RTL CSS because there's an alternative, and the alternative is built into WordPress. It's simpler, in my opinion, to use, and it usually provides a better right-to-left experience. So what you need to do is three things. First, you generate a fully mirrored CSS file. I'll talk in a second on how to do that. Uh, so let's say you have style CSS. You just run it through something, and then you get a mirrored uh, CSS file. You name that file style dash RTL CSS. And then when you register your style sheet with WordPress, you also say add data. And then if it's an RTL version, replace it. And what this does is then when WordPress is going to be loading style CSS, if it is running in a right to left context, it instead going to load the style dash RTL file, which is great. So um, how would you create that mirrored CSS file? Well, you just follow what WordPress core uh, does. It integrates a node module called RTL CSS. It's quite easy to install it locally. You can also just go to rtlcss.com to get all the details about it. And then it's just a script or a command that you feed it your CSS files, and it gives you the fully mirrored files. Uh, it's really good. It does perfect mirroring. It will handle your shadows, your animations, your positioning, and everything else. So you really usually don't need to think about much else. But if you do want to think about much else, if you've got some kind of complex interface or small details that you need to fix, you can do this using some advanced options, directives, and plugins that uh, RTL CSS supports. You can see some example of that in WordPress core. Uh, I'll now show a couple in a second. Um, and of course, it integrates with popular build system, which is uh, basically my goal in the world right now, today, is to get everybody to integrate this in their build system so that they do it once and then they don't have to think about RTL anymore. It's just going to be there. So there's a few examples. Uh, I don't have much time. No, I don't, so I'm not going to actually talk about them. But RTL CSS supports a bunch of directives that you can use. Now, um, what I'd like to go from here, because like there's an agenda, and that is that I think that RTL support should be ubiquitous because it's so easy to do it that, you know, why not make it a requirement for themes and plugins to just do it? Maybe we can build better tools, that's for sure, but we should just do it. And when you look at the usage stats of WordPress and various languages, you can see that uh, Arabic, for example, is just 0.25% of all WordPress install. While it is a language, it's the fifth biggest language in the world. It is a language that's spoken by about 4 to 5% of the world population. So of course, we might not be able to get to 4% by next year. But maybe we can get to 1% just by providing a better experience. So that's it. I'm flipped, so I'm going to be OK now. Thank you very much, and have a great day.